Okay, hey everyone, welcome to another episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff. Today we have another awesome review for you uh, from a channel favorite, of course, from the brand Christopher Ward. A little bit about Christopher Ward. They were actually founded out of London, of course, in the United Kingdom. They have kind of ascended beyond the simple term of micro brand, and I really consider them to be more of a boutique brand because of how successful they are. Pretty much how many different lines that they have. Um, you know, they have everything from motorsports to dedicated dress watches to different types of complications, pilots watches, um, even stuff that's just of course uh, in the vintage styling and then as well as modern style stuff too um, with just tons of different variations, different types of movements. They have in-house, they have automatic, they have hand wound um, and of course they even have quartz as well. So really Christopher Ward is kind of the full uh, you know, a one-stop shop, if you will, if you're looking for um, a, a modern wristwatch. And really, as an independent brand, they really shine in everything that they offer and that they have their own unique design aesthetic. You can definitely tell a Christopher Ward from another watch. And I think they do have a very uniquely British design that is really quite eye-catching. And uh, for what they offer, it's, it's pretty insane. I think it's funny that some people's biggest complaint about Christopher Ward is that, you know, they have sales on their watches and they sell them for cheaper than uh, their normal retail, which, you know, some people feel kind of cheap in the watch. But I think it's actually pretty awesome and it's a pretty good business plan because they can clear out old stock and continue to create new models uh, with new updates and upgrades. Uh, so can't really complain there. So um, a little bit about this type of watch. It's kind of a mixture of two different types. It is, of course, uh, as you can tell by that extra arm there, it is a... Uh, traveler's watch or a GMT slash world timer. Um, basically when you're looking for a traveler's watch you're going to want something with that functionality and you're going to be able to track you know multiple time zones with relative ease. Now it doesn't have to normally have a special type of bezel you could also have a 12 hour time bezel and uh, keep track of two different um, time zones very easily that way but it's really nice to have that dedicated 24 hour um, indexed bezel because it can also line up with a 24 hour arm and then you also have your standard um, you know your your standard time there on the regular hours hand and then you can also of course move around the the bezel and, and kind of slide into different time zones which is definitely really cool so you can actually track three at once now another kind of part of the style of this watch uh, that it ties into is a dive watch because it's actually um, from the c65 family and if you guys watched uh, the channel you know that i recently reviewed uh, the divers and it's pretty much the same case uh, this one is just a hair thicker um, because there is a rotor spinning around in there versus the mechanical hand wound movements in the three hand divers. Um, but yes, this does have a bit of a dive aesthetic to it. Um, and basically some key common characters and design language for divers are of course something that's going to be water resistant uh, Normally through some type of screw down crown something that's tough legible with a dive time bezel and a uh, Divers extension if on bracelet now this particular model is the c65 trident GMT So let's go ahead and take a closer look Okay now, as you can see, really, really handsome, great color play, wonderfully brushed there, just really, really quite, quite nice. Um, now, the nice thing, as you can see, it does have that great index 24 hour bezel there. It's not a true uh, GMT bezel as far as the movement goes. It still has that 120 click diver bezel. But it is indexed, so you can change the time zones very simply there. And then basically, it would just be, you know, reading off of. And then if you go halfway in between, um, really quite self explanatory there. And maybe another video will kind of get into the weeds of using a uh, 
a world timer or a GMT or whatever um, you want to call it. Uh, it's kind of traveler's bezel there to track different times. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this particular model. Now, you can buy these directly from Christopher Ward. Uh, their current retail price is $1,095 on this really wonderful uh, stainless steel bracelet here. Uh, really quite handsome and I think it's a really great deal considering everything that you're getting um, and then also the execution. So I mean for the price and I mean I'm sure this price will go down because that's just what Christopher Ward is known for. They do have great sales, summer sales, winter sales, um, end of year sales, uh, spring sales, name a sale, they've got it. Um, so I'm sure you'll see this eventually discounted a bit as long as it's not just constantly sold out. Now at just over a thousand dollars it is actually quite a great deal um, and one of the reasons why is look at that profile and one of the reasons it can actually maintain such a thin profile at just a hair over 12 millimeters thick is because it does have the uh, 2893 movement in it which is really nice and thin and takes advantage of that wonderfully thin profile there get it back into focus so you can see some of that finishing look at the way the light plays off just these fantastic case finishings there really beautifully done as you can see you got the high polished bevel then you have a flat um, brush then another high polished bevel which really adds some major dimension into this case that normally you wouldn't see on anything you know outside of some pretty high-end um, compound cases and then also of course Seiko which is really known for the really um, outstanding case finishing at an affordable price so it's really nice to see a higher level of finish as well but also using some of those same tricks to help the watch wear super flat and super comfortable on your wrist here from Christopher Ward now, of course, in the beginning of the video, you saw the brief uh, dimensions. This is a 41 millimeter watch. Um, it is 12 and a half millimeters thick and has a 47.1 millimeter lug to lug. It is fully stainless steel, um, three, uh, uh, 316L surgical grade stainless steel. It does have that box dome sapphire crystal with inner AR coating, as you can see. Uh, it's just a slight bluish hue you can catch but it's definitely not intrusive at all which is a really really good thing uh, now I did mention that it does have the 120 click bezel it is fully stainless steel and does have that 24 hour index it does also have that 12 hour um, I'm sorry the 12 o'clock loom pip which is nice uh, for tracking if you do end up taking this into the water um, and then it has a push down crown versus a screw down crown and it actually achieves its 150 meters water resistance pretty much through just the use of seals and kind of uh you know just being overbuilt so really nice and then as you can see beautifully done stamped uh case back there with the more retro style um, design on the Trident as well as uh, the typeface as well. Um, really nice. And then of course this gorgeous fully brushed, I've wanted Christopher Ward to do this for so long, is do a fully brushed three link bracelet. I think it looks absolutely outstanding. And of course it is branded. It does have the uh, fold over locking system. Everything is milled out uh, really nicely done. And then you even get the quick adjust system here so you can tighten it and loosen it uh, without any tools which is really a nice feature and then you can just click it back into where you're comfortable really nice detail here as you can see that there's really nice soft chamfering there on that folding clasp which really just adds and then of course it is signed which is another beautiful touch but uh, that soft chamfer there, see that line, that really adds to the comfort on wrist. And then of course this really nice taper uh, down from 22 uh, to 18 really also helps with that. Now on the dial, it does have that beautifully satiny matte finished black dial, nice and dark but not wet looking or inky 
definitely has more of the kind of old school vintage diver aesthetic to it, especially with that old radium loom, which actually is a very nice kind of ivory tone and a lot less yellow than what you've seen kind of from Christopher Ward in the terms of old radium loom in the past. So if that is something that's held you back, I think the tone here is actually quite good. Quick comparison, as you can see, a little bit more mustardy here on the standard diver version versus you have more of that kind of uh, clear ivory color um, on the GMT, which is really, really great. So with that said, let's go ahead and get this on wrist. All right, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this really works just perfect. S rides super low, as you can see, just hugs the wrist with those contours. Really beautifully done, plays with the light there, the finishing, the fine bevels, just gorgeous. And then to top it off, it just has that beautiful fully brushed bracelet which just gives it that sporty vibe and uh, it, it really just modernizes the watch just a hair over um, some of the uh, vintage, more vintage style rubber or uh, leather strap options there. As you can see when I just get a little bit more of my arm laid flat here to give you a little bit uh, better idea of scale on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, it definitely does not look too big, but of course, uh, when you get it close up, it's definitely gonna look larger, just like kind of any uh, normal wrist shot in a picture will do. But I cannot stress enough how well this watch wears. It does have quite a large expansive dial and is very legible, which is great. Um, as you can see the typeface layout there, you do have the controversial uh, Christopher Ward text at the nine o'clock. You have a really nicely done uh, date there with the black date disc at the three o'clock, quite stealthy, and then just a little bit of information and branding there with the automatic GMT and the 150 meters water resistance uh, down at the six o'clock, then at the 12, which isn't completely devoid of uh, just a little bit more balance by having that nice um, imprinted uh, twin flag logo, which you see here on the crown and then also on the clasp. So I think it's just really nicely done. And you know what's funny is, of course, people see the color scheme and they automatically think Explorer too. Um, but you know what? The crazy thing is, it's really easy to see that that's not really the case because it evolved from this watch, which looks nothing like an Explorer 2. Um, it just happened to kind of come together and uh, into this way, especially with the uh, vintage coloring and then that nice orange, um, you know, GMT arm, of course, so there was gonna be some uh, comparisons. And then of course the beautiful uh, brushed stainless steel bezel there. But you know, I think it is a really nice, um, it d gives you that kind of feel and, and style. Uh, definitely even a more retro look, uh, maybe uh, paying homage to some of the older reference, uh, like the Steve McQueen uh, GMT. Uh, so I, I'm really a fan of it and I like that it it's, it's not a blatant homage, it definitely does uh, have some design cues, especially in its colorway, that really pay tribute to some iconic pieces, but the timepiece itself is really quite original and different. So with that said, let's go ahead and get some loom shots. Alrighty, let's go ahead and hit the lights. So as you can see, really nice loom. Of course, this is not a hardcore diver by any means, so it's really not meant to be some crazy loom beast, but it definitely holds its own and is actually really well applied. I'd even say that it outshines the diver model as far as the loom application. So really uh, kudos on this really being kind of a, a newer, updated and improved model, uh, adding to that awesome new C65 uh, Trident line. Now, uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get some low light transition shots here, because although my hot studio lights do uh, quite a good job of imitating, you know, um, 
full on outdoors, um, direct sunlight situations, um, you know, you're not always going to spend your time outside in direct sunlight. So I think it is really nice to get an idea of what this watch will actually look like transitioning uh, in between indoors and outdoors in a vehicle and out of vehicle and as you can see you you can very legibly see that great 24 hour arm there and then even the seconds hand with that uh, nice loomed tip which of course fades a bit but you know this is not really um you know some super modern super stark and bright Bauhaus style diver that is just completely teched out this is uh has a really nice vintage retro vibe to it which i think it pulls off extremely well and look at that case finishing look at that brushing there the way the light just dances off of that brush stainless steel bezel very nice and that dial just maintains its darkness and its blackness really at every angle so really quite nice let's go ahead and get the lights on here okay and now let's get some closing thoughts now uh, of course on the wrist it really just wraps around your arm there um, it definitely rides much closer and more felt um, than the classic c60 which has grown to become quite thick um, even the GMT C60, um, even though it has the same movement, it's actually still quite thick because it shares a very thick case um, that needs to have 600 meters water resistance. Now this case only needs to have 150 meters, which is quite good. And honestly, along there was a time uh, when that was a, a suitable diver um, depth there for a watch. So it's it's really quite amazing that kind of with more advancements in technology and production expertise, what we're able to produce now and release. So really impressive from that standpoint very fine proportions definitely still has that vintage vibe to it but is still unmistakably christopher ward and does ooze just a little bit of british design now um some model variants of course you can get it on uh different uh you can get it on rubber you can get it on different types of uh uh of leather straps and then of course that wonderful stainless steel bracelet which I have um, on the review there everything tapers so everything is nice and clean and comfortable on wrist really great execution from that standpoint I'd say comparable models there is actually there are quite a few uh, Bell and Ross GMT watches uh, in that vintage aesthetic that I think are really quite comparable to this but of course uh, for a much more expensive price, especially if you're going to buy them directly from Bell and Ross. Um, now, the nice thing is you can actually buy this watch directly from Christopher Ward, have it fully covered, have an outstanding warranty, and uh, really rest easy. Um, and then it pretty much has the exact same specs, same movement, um, and it's it can be even more water resistant. So that's a huge benefit. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, there's a Steinhardt that has a similar aesthetic. You're right, there is the Steinhardt um, uh, model that is actually a GMT that pays very clear tribute to the Explorer 2, not just in its color scheme, but also in kind of every other design element. Now, in that case, uh, that is a great value of a watch and also has quite good specs, etc. But you're going to sacrifice, you know, although you might be getting it cheaper, you're going to really sacrifice some of that originality and some of that design work. It is one thing to kind of do your version of, uh, you know, of the same watch, say when you, it's, you know, it's like tracing a picture, right? It, how much time does it take to do that versus drawing something that's original and then of course using just from your memory. Now there's gonna be a lot more changes and there's gonna be a lot more design time and a lot more research to build something new uh, versus just paying tribute to something that already exists that's been repeated and uh, honored over and over and over again. So. Um, of course, I would love to see a little bit more color options for this. I think a blue dial would be absolutely outstanding. I'll leave everything exactly the same, put a blue dial on it, and it's just absolute money. Um, 
And, uh, but other than that, I think, although this is definitely very Explorer 2-esque in its color scheme, it's definitely completely different in pretty much every other way um, in its execution and its overall design. So the bottom line, they're definitely giving you so much to love. Typical Christopher Ward um, and that fact that they really just over deliver in kind of every measure when it comes to value. So they continue to lead the way in that, you know, thousand dollars and under and just just about a thousand dollar price range and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do next. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please do hit like and if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys.